book that no one ever reads, the unread book. There is one book that not many people spend very much time with. The most novel book in America today is the Bible. Yes, the Bible is the most neglected book in the United States to get today. Although the Bible has already sold more than eight times as many copies as all other bestsellers put together. If you took the next four bestsellers to the King James 1611 Bible, you would find the good old King James 1611 Bible has sold more than eight times as many copies as the next four put together. And yet for all its many sales, the Bible is a neglected book in America today. It's the world's most neglected book. It's the book that no one ever reads. And for just a few minutes now, I'd like to draw you a picture on why men will not read the Bible. There are some very good reasons. A man says he doesn't have much time. Well, he has time to read the newspaper in a time it will take to read the average magazine together, clear through one time, the average magazine in America, like a weekly publication. In a time it would take a man to do that, he could read the New Testament clear through one time. And yet people don't take time to read the Bible. Why is that? Why is it the Bible is the world's most neglected book today? And why is there dust on the average Bible in the American home? Well, there's a very good reason. First of all, the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 19 and verse 20, this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because the deeds were evil. And everyone that does evil hates the light, neither cometh to it, lest his deeds should be reproved. The first reason why men do not read the Bible is because it strengthens their conscience. A man wants to have a weak conscience so he can do what he wants to do. And of course, that's where scientists and scholars and psychologists and psychiatrists have led America astray. A man says, well, I believe if I live by my conscience, it'll be all right. Man said one time, he says, I believe if I just do what my conscience tells me is right, I'll make out all right. No, you won't. You can't possibly. The Bible says their mind and their conscience is defiled. And a conscience that's not witnessed to and attested to by the Holy Spirit of God is an unreliable conscience. Now look at that. Be honest with me and be honest with yourself. Don't you remember the first time you did something wrong? Didn't you know it was wrong? Well, how do you look at it now? Do you know why you think it's all right now? Well, the people that believe in progress say it's because now it's accepted. That isn't why it's all right now. The reason why it's all right now is you've deadened your conscience. You've killed your conscience. And the Bible says their mind and their conscience is defiled. Conscience alone is not a reliable guide. Conscience has to be guided by the Word of God. There are millions of people in America today who are sincerely deluded, sincerely wrong, and the consequences of their being wrong will be just as bad as if they were wrong intentionally. The Bible strengthens conscience, and that's why people don't read it. And that isn't all. The Bible wounds pride. I know of no one book in the world that can tear a man's pride down like the Bible. And the Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The Bible wounds the self-righteous, hypocritical pride of man. Suppose you're an evolutionist. You wouldn't like to read the Bible. The Bible doesn't say things are getting better. The Bible says things are getting morally and spiritually worse. And that hurts an evolutionist pride. <laughs> oh my, how the Bible shocks these proud people. This rich, giddy, godless society crowd. How the Bible just tears them to shreds. No wonder they don't read it. They can't enjoy reading it. It wounds the pride. The Bible is the great leveler of all human nature, and the Bible puts everything down to a level where it's under God Almighty. And proud people don't read the Bible. Proud people have never liked to read the Bible. Proud people never will read the Bible. Proud people will continue to be the greatest generation of Bible dumbbells the world has ever seen. Proud people don't read the Bible because it wounds the pride and thereby confirms the Scripture when the Scripture says, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. On the fly leaf of many a Christian's Bible, you'll find these words written, This book will keep me from my sins, or my sins will keep me from this book. And that's why men do not like to read the Bible. The Bible says it's a light to our feet. It's a lamp to our path. 
and men love darkness rather than light because the deeds were evil. A man says, well, I don't read the Bible because it has a lot of nonsense in it. Well, that's the talk of a man that has nothing but nonsense in his head. If any man would examine the scientific claims of the Bible carefully before good fundamental scholars, he'd soon be convinced it's the Word of God. But men don't take the time. They don't take the time because, for one thing, the Bible exalts. The Bible exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible raises him up and puts him above every other name. With the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, every head should bow, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Men like to hear their societies or their denominations or their clubs or their lodges or their committees or their institutions or their histories or their countries elevated. But the Bible elevates the name of Jesus above every other name. And that's why men will not read the Bible, do not take time to read the Bible, and don't enjoy reading the Bible. They don't like to read the Bible because it exalts Jesus. It puts him above the human level. Men want their own saviors. They want famous scholars and famous philosophers. And they put these men on the same level with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why, in a great pagan temple in New York called a church, they have on the front of that place the figures of different men, among them the Lord Jesus Christ, standing beside the other men, just like he were one of them. But alas, the Bible puts him far above the level of the greatest man that ever lived. And that's why men will not read the Bible and do not love to read God's Word. And that is an all. The Bible, the Bible disturbs the routine, the daily routine godlessness of a godless age. The Bible upsets people, it disturbs them. A man said, don't read the Bible, you lose your mind. Don't read the Bible, you get to be a fanatic. You'll be crazy. A man said one time, he said, don't read the Bible, it'll upset you. Yes, it will upset you, and a good many people need to be upset these days. The trouble with us today is we're upset about everything except the thing we ought to be upset about. And men will not read the Bible because it disturbs their routine godlessness. And that isn't all. The Bible exposes. The Bible exposes sin. Christ said, I bear witness to this world. He said, the world hates me. Why? Because I bear witness of it, that its deeds are evil. Men who live in sin have always hated men who have exposed sin and called them negative or apostles of discord or apostles of hatred or gospels of gloom and that kind of nonsense. Godless men whose lives are cloaked where their religious garments of self-righteousness have always hated an expose of sin. And I've observed, as a general rule, that people who are the most concerned about racial and social issues are the least concerned about the individual sin in their own individual lives. That's a rule you can run by. Men do not read the Bible for these reasons. A man says, well, I see no reason to correct myself. I think I'm doing pretty well. Yes, but you've never exposed yourself to the Bible. Why, a room looks clean till you pull down a shade and, or pull back blinds or lift the shade up and in comes the sunlight and the shaft of light comes into the room and suddenly you see the room is filled with millions of dust particles. Your life may look pretty good as long as you compare it to a dark room, but try a little sunlight in and see how it looks. Take the light of God's word and let it shine. Or you say, I'm clever, I'm smart, I'm not going to give my conscience a chance to get awake. God won't judge the heathen. God won't judge me for what I don't know. <laughs> yes, he will. Why, God has as much sense as a scholar. When a scholar tests a man, he doesn't test him for what he knows. He tests him for his aptitude. You're tested for what you're able or capable of knowing. And my good friend, God Almighty will judge you, not just according to what you do know, but according to what you could have known if you'd wanted to do the right thing. Men will not read the Bible because it exposes sin in their lives. It makes manifest the deeds of darkness and brings them out into light. And the Bible says in the third chapter of John, verse 18, 19, and 20, this is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that does evil hates the light, neither cometh to it lest his deeds should be reproved. But the greatest reason of all why men do not relish God's word and do not love to read the Bible, the greatest reason of all is that the Bible the Bible demands obedience. You can't read the Bible and be the same way after you put it down. After you've read the Bible, you're either a little bit better or a little worse. The Bible demands obedience. It demands obedience uh, concerning its precepts and its demands upon the conscience. And you can't read the Bible without coming away a little bit better or a little bit worse than when you first picked it up. 
And that's why men will not read the Bible. Now, what are you going to do about this? All right, the thing you do is throw caution to the winds, get your Bible, open it, and read it. To thunder with what the church fathers say. What saith the scripture? Find out what God has to say about the international situation. Find out what God has to say about healing. Find out what God has to say about health. For a change, throw aside the opinions of men and find out what God has to say about a matter. Find out what God says about heaven. Find out what God has to say about hell. Throw away all this, these opinions and nonsense and conceits of men and vain tradition after the rudiments of this world and find out what saith the Lord, what saith the scriptures. Why, one night a man began to read the Bible and the man was an infidel. He'd never believed the Bible. He'd been raised and brought up through high school and college and had a lot of wise and smart ideas in his head and thought he knew a lot more than he did. And he began to read the Bible and he turned to his wife and said, Wife, he said, if this book is true, he said, I'm lost. And he kept on reading it. And about a week later, while he was reading, he turned to his wife and he said, Wife, he said, if this book is true, I, I can be saved. And he kept on reading the Bible and about a week later, he suddenly turned to his wife and said, You know, honey, he said, if this book is true, I am saved. And that's it. That Bible will tell you how to be saved. That Bible will give you assurance about your salvation. Read it. And don't ever forget, your sin will keep you from that book, or that book will keep you from your sin. Now, I've given you a drawing tonight on why men do not like to read the Bible. If you've enjoyed this telecast, or if the Lord has spoken to your heart through it, you've received a blessing from it, please let me know. Drop us a card in care of TV for Christ, Panama City, Florida. TV for Christ, Panama City, Florida is all the address you need. TV for Christ, Panama City, Florida. Write and tell me about the blessing God has given you. Or if you've received Christ through these telecasts in the past, in past telecasts, write and let us know of your decision. If you'd like to mail you something to help you along in your spiritual life, I'd like to be able to rejoice with you in your newfound salvation. TV for Christ, Panama City, Florida is all the address you need. Write today, won't you?